What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Toyota Tundra, courtesy of Hanover Toyota in Hanover, PA. And of course, I requested the 1794 edition. This thing has everything. I'm looking at a wood grain steering wheel right now. This thing is freaking awesome. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Tundra. First one being the SR starting at $33,425. SR5 for $35,095. Limited starting at $42,120. Platinum starts at $48,625. 1794 edition the one we have today this one is going to start at $48,625 and lastly the TRD Pro starting at $48,505 and by the way for all those trim levels but the TRD Pro that was the two-wheel drive setup if you wanted to go the 4x4 route simply add $3,050 to any of those prices and so but regardless of trim level the power plant on the Tundra is going to be the same and that is one of the new changes actually for the 2020 Tundra. Previously, there was a 4.6 liter V8. There were some flex fuel versions, but for 2020 at least, it has been simplified to one engine setup being a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 381 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 401 pound-feet of torque available at 3,600 RPM, of course, that power being sent to rear wheels or all wheels through Toyota's four-wheel drive system. That power is sent to the ground through a six-speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers coming in at approximately 13 in the city, 18 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And one of the cool things that you always kind of look for in trucks when it comes to fuel efficiency and all that is going to be the size of the actual tank. And it actually differs a little bit depending on the trim level. For instance, if you go with a limited trim level and up, you're actually going to get a larger 38 gallon tank so more miles therefore you can actually go before you have to fuel it up again so that's kind of a cool thing if this is being used as a work truck because you know time is money you don't want to have to stop as frequently to fill this thing up so i did want to mention that but having mentioned all that let's go ahead and stop in the middle of this road here and let's do a quick little acceleration see how quickly we can get this new 2020 tundra here up to speed here we go oh yeah <laughs> Dude, this is a V8. <laughs> Quite honestly, you're not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. Again, this is a V8, although it is quite a heavy truck, still plenty of acceleration in this thing, so absolutely no issues for me there. But to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.9 inch power assisted ventilated front discs with four piston front calipers. In the back, 13.6 inch ventilated rear discs. And so since I'm coming up to a stop sign right now, as far as the braking feel goes, it is definitely just fine. Certainly no issues with bringing this thing to a stop. So that is definitely a plus in a larger truck like the Tundra. And touching on handling and suspension a little bit, up front you're going to get an independent coil spring high mounted double wishbone front suspension with the stabilizer bar and nitrogen gas filled shock absorbers as well. In the back you're going to have a live axle with trapezoidal multi-leaf rear suspension. And I always like to mention this as far as suspension goes, as far as ground clearance goes on the 2020 Tundra. That is going to come in anywhere from 10.4 inches to 10.6 inches so and of course if you needed a little bit more than that hit up Hanover off-road and they can lift it for you but anywho as far as ride quality goes absolutely no issues for me honestly I've driven a lot of trucks actually I've reviewed a good bit of trucks and this one's just fine as far as ride quality goes I'm actually kind of surprised it's pretty nice touching on steering feel a little bit it is you know pretty much as expected not too loose of a steering feel but it's definitely not on the heavier side either so it's pretty normal for a truck so that's all I'm gonna say about that. Touching on cabin noise, you guys could probably hear me quite well because cabin noise is actually excellent in this truck. Not a whole lot of wind noise coming into the cabin. It's actually pretty windy today. So well done Toyota for that. Touching on visibility a little bit. Of course, this is a truck so you can see perfectly fine out the back. That's definitely excellent. And of course, with this being a truck, you will get a sliding rear window for the SR and SR5. However, if you went above that for all other trim levels, it is a power sliding rear window. So. That's always pretty convenient. The 1794 actually goes one better than that, and it completely lowers that entire rear glass, just kind of like a uh, Toyota 4Runner would do. I recently reviewed that. It did the same thing, so I absolutely love that. So if you enjoy the outside, you enjoy that open air, 1794 is where you're at. But so anywho, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this new 2020 Toyota Tundra. 
All right, so here is the beast, you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look up front first. Front grille is actually gonna differ amongst the trim levels, of course. Mesh style design you can find on the SR5. However, on the limited trim level and the 1794 edition that we have here today, you will find chrome horizontal bars. That, of course, is what you're looking at right now. And I do like that look. And another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is this, uh, this grill right here, this is actually functional. It does let air through to kind of cool down the engine. So I did want to mention that as well. So that's pretty cool. A lot of times they'll be fake. So I think it's pretty cool that this one is functional, but Anywho, taking a look to the sides, halogen headlights with LED accent lights you will find on the SR and SR5 trim levels. And those headlights will come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they're going to turn on automatically for you there. Also, halogen fog lights can be found on the SR5 trim level. But if you were to go with the limited trim level and up, you will find LED headlights up front there. And to go along with that, just below LED fog lights as well. So that, of course, is going to give you a much better illumination at night. But continuing on, make Making our way to the side of this one, there is going to be a badge located on the front door. It is going to differ. Some of them will say V8, so you got some VA badging. However, on the other hand, some of them, like this one, is going to have a cool 1794 edition badge and i think that's absolutely awesome but anyways <laughs> it is going to differ slightly amongst the trim levels once again chrome door handles you can find them on the limited trim level and up you're going to get black door handles if you were to go with the sr or sr5 trim levels running boards are going to be optional on all trim levels so they do not come standard on any particular trim but they are optional we do of course have them today when it comes to the side mirrors there will be black power adjustable heated side mirrors for the sr and sr5 trim levels however if you went with the limited trim level you're going to find chrome outside mirrors and that of course is on the 1794 as well and integrated turd signals for the platinum and i did want to add the 1794 edition also is going to add puddle lights which you guys can kind of see right there you're not going to be able to see it because it's daytime but that is where the puddle lights are going to illuminate at night and also power folding reverse tilt down side mirrors and i noticed that when i put the tundra in reverse here they did tilt down so you can make sure you're not running anything over so that's always a good thing too of course and yet another thing the 1794 edition is going to add i don't know if you guys could see that i'm trying Trying to focus in on it the uh blind spot warning indicators found in the side mirrors they will come standard on the 1794 and up as well but anyways taking a step back looking at the wheel setup 18 inch steel wheels you can find them on the sr and sr5 trim levels 20 inch alloy wheels can be found on the limited platinum and 1794 edition that of course is what you're looking at right now and if you were to go with the trd pro they are going to be 18 inch bbs forged aluminum alloys so once again i keep saying it's slightly different setup depending on the trim level that you go with but let's now go ahead and make our way to the back as you guys can see the gas tank is found on the driver's side there but so now since we are around back four by four badging can be found in the lower left hand corner of the tailgate if equipped i should say if you have the two-wheel drive obviously you're not going to find that then Tundra lettering can be found on the right side of the tailgate. Of course, you have your tow hitch down there with four or seven pin connectors. And by the way, max towing capacity comes in at up to 9,900 pounds. Actually ranges from 9,200 to 9,900, depending on the trim level once again. But then just underneath, as always, you guys always have to mention this single exhaust outlet with the chrome tip here. So guys all know what is coming next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> Alright, so since we are now around back, first thing I wanted to mention, since we do have a truck, is as far as that rear tailgate goes, it is an easy lower tailgate. There's no power tailgate here or anything like that, but it also doesn't drop down a thousand miles per hour either. It is an easy lower tailgate, so figured I'd mention that. As far as the bed sizes go, they are available, of course, in a short bed, a standard bed, or a long bed. The short bed is going to be five and a half feet. Standard bed is six and a half feet, and the long bed is 8.1 feet to be exact. So do have a couple options there. Do love the bed liner that Toyota put in this particular Tundra, at least. That is pretty nice, too. Do want to also mention there's a deck rail system with four adjustable tie-down cleats. That's going to come with a limited trim level and up. It's optional, actually, on the SR and SR5. Definitely an option I would recommend. Having used a truck quite often, they definitely come in handy. But so anyways, making your way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 34.7 inches if you were to go with the double cab. However, if you went with the crew cab that we have today, that bumps it up to 42.7 three inches 
That is insane. That is a ton of rear legroom. So you could put George Mearson or Yao Ming or any basketball player in the back of the Tundra and they would be perfectly comfortable. It's craziness. But anyways, for reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. So I was certainly perfectly comfortable. I did want to also mention those rear seats are actually 60-40 split fold up rear seats. So you do have that option if you did not have any rear passengers, maybe a Mastiff or a dog you wanted to put back there. That's one option you can use rear ventilation can be found on the limited trim level and up it's going to be optional on the sr5 also have a 12 volt power outlet back there and overall just a very comfortable place to be in those rear seats to be quite honest but Anyways, make your way up to the front seats. You will find manually adjustable cloth seats if you were to go with SR or SR5 trims. If you were to jump up to the limited, you're gonna get leather trim seating with a 10-way power adjustable driver seat, six-way power adjustable passenger seat actually as well. Platinum trim and the 1794 edition is gonna give you heated and ventilated front seats. And the TRD Pro, of course, is gonna give you TRD Pro specific seats, giving you a black leather with red contrast stitching. Overall, I did want to mention, since we have the 1794 edition, I love the 1794 embroidered to the top part of the seating. And did I mention, you guys, this not only is a perforated leather, but with suede inserts as well. Not only in the front, but in the back as well. There are actually suede inserts on the left and right sides of the seats, as well as on the bottom portion. So that is pretty cool. I'm always a fan of suede inserts or suede seating because that's the kind of thing you find in McLaren, Lamborghini, the high-end cars out there. So that's always nice. But anyways, I'll get more into the luxuries of the 1794 edition as we go on. And when it comes to the steering wheel, speaking of luxuries, let me start by saying urethane tilt steering wheel is going to come with the SR and SR5 trims. However, you will find a tilt and telescoping leather wrap steering wheel for the limited trim level and up. And the best part of this particular one, 1794 edition is actually going to give you a combination of leather and wood grain steering wheel. This is insane. And although I'd never owned a car with a wood grain steering wheel, I actually love the feel of it. It's pretty freaking cool. But anyways, I had to mention it, but let's go ahead and get to the startup now. And let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Toyota logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock and unlock, it is a pretty basic key. Of course, less to go wrong with that, I guess, but that's Toyota reliability for you. When it comes to the startup though, I did want to mention the limited trim level and up is going to give you a push button start. Otherwise you have that traditional turnkey ignition. However, of course, since we have the 1794, all I am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine and start button located just by the driver's right knee there. Let's open then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a digital display front and center surrounded by four mini displays, which is, I don't know, it's kind of cool. It's a little different setup than I'm used to, but to control what is on that digital display front and center, there are actually steering wheel mounting controls on the right side there. That's gonna give you things like your average miles per gallon, how long you've been driving for, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, which you might find yourself looking at a couple times in a Tundra. Also, digital speedometer is available up there. There's gonna be a compass, your radio information, some safety features when you need your next oil change, a ton of useful information. So I am glad that the digital display is up there at least, but let's go ahead now and make our way to probably the best part on this particular Tundra, the interior quality. Power moonroof is going to come with the TRD Pro. However, it is optional on the Platinum and 1794 editions we do happen to have it today so that is pretty cool overhead sunglass holder is going to come with the sr5 trim level and up you will find an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors if you were to go with the sr5 trim level and up i love that they have that on the sr5 the garage door openers i don't really care about the auto dimming rear view mirror part but the garage door openers is pretty cool so that way you don't have to have one that clips to your sun visor and rattles as you drive down the road not that i have have that I'm just saying <laughs> and of course as I've mentioned with the interior quality in this particular one you do have wood grain accents everywhere of course the steering wheel actually the shifter on the doors both front and rear doors actually and just above the passenger side glove box as well and it continues on with the perforated leather of course you have perforated leather on the seats they're heated and ventilated they need to be for that but there is actually perforated leather on the doors as well and again just above the glove box you almost never see perforated leather above the glove box i had to mention that that's craziness another thing i wanted to mention is there is a little tray area above the tech display and i'll get to the tech in a minute but that tray area has a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around there 
just in front of the shifter, you're gonna find a cup holder followed by two additional cup holders. So if you're super thirsty people, that's definitely a plus to have as well. And just in front of all those cup holders, you have a ton of hookups and actually three USB connection ports, including a 12 volt power outlet as well. Definitely something you don't usually see. There is actually a little storage area to the right of those cup holders. I found that kind of interesting too, but that's nice. Just behind all of that, some 1794 edition badging once again, and a cell phone holder. And that's actually where I put my cell phone for the drive, so that didn't slide around at all for me. So that's perfect size actually for a cell phone. And of course, when you open up that center armrest, you have a massive area for storage. And of course there is a 12 volt power outlet within that storage area. And there's a nice little felt tray, I guess you could say as well. And of course, on the back side of the center armrest, you do have a couple of handy things. You have two pen or pencil holders. You have a tissue holder. That is something Toyota does. There you put anything else in that holder besides tissues and Toyota will find you. And the last thing, they also have a card holder Holder. And I actually do like that because especially if, this, if you're using this as a work truck, you can store some business cards there and, and they'll be of course easily accessible. If you ever forget to put them in your wallet, maybe you have backups right there. So I do actually think that's pretty darn cool. But but honestly for a truck, the interior quality here is second to none. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But continuing on now to the tech display, seven inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the SR trim level. 8-inch color touchscreen display is going to come with the SR5 trim level and up. However, either way, get ready for a new feature for the 2020 Tundra here. Bluetooth and audio streaming, that's going to come standard. That's pretty expected, I guess you could say at this point. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, for the first time ever, is now standard on the 2020 Toyota Tundra. So that is a brilliant thing. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course, giving you access to free navigation through your smartphone. All you need to do is hook it up via USB cable to the Tundra, and then you have free navigation up on that screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs, and there's a couple other apps available through that as well. So that is brilliant. And that comes with even the base trim level, the SR, by the way. Factory navigation is going to come with the limited trim level and up. And of course, you can check out your radio settings as expected up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find six speakers if you were to go with the SR. Double cab is going to give you seven speakers. Crew cab is gonna give you nine speakers. I love how the speakers differentiate, not based off the trim level, but based off the size of the truck. That's kind of interesting. And you will actually get a 12 speaker JBL sound system with the Platinum 1794 and TRD Pro trim levels. So I think you guys know what we have to do. And by the way, we do have that JBL sound system, of course. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. That sound system. One of the best actually, believe it or not, I've tested in quite a while, even in luxury vehicles that I've tested, that JBL sound system, that bass had to have been rumbling my camera. Can imagine it was, of course, I don't know if it was or wasn't right now, but dang, that bass is ridiculous. Clarity is on point. Well done JBL with that sound system here in the Tundra. But so then last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the tech display, is when you do put the Tundra in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there will be front side and side curtain airbags, but also driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system will come standard. There's also trailer sway control, or perhaps the best part, at least when it comes to the safety is Toyota Safety Sense will come standard for all trim levels of the Tundra, including pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, automatic high beams, and dynamic radar cruise control, essentially where the Tundra follows the vehicle in front of you on the highway, slows down when they slow down, speed up when they speed up. So it's just an advanced cruise control system, you guys know that. Platinum and 1794 trim levels are also going to add a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and front and rear park assist. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you like. If you wanted to support the channel even more, feel free to buy some merch just below the video here. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.